Hi, I'm Robin Worley. Welcome to Lenscraft. Today I want to look at sharpening photos for printing. I'll be explaining a couple of ways that I use to sharpen my own photos as part of preparing to print them. One method is using Adobe Lightroom and the other is using Nick Sharpner Pro. I also want to let you know that I'm having a prize draw where I'm giving away a license for the latest version of the Nick collection. The prize draw will be on the 16th of August 2021 and the details of how to enter will be in my August newsletter. I'll include a link to subscribe to the newsletter in the YouTube video details below. But let's start by looking at what I would do to sharpen this image for printing using Lightroom. I've already made all my adjustments to the photo and as far as I'm concerned it's finished and ready for printing. By the way, if you want to know about my complete printing process, I'll include a link to that in the YouTube video information as well. Having soft proofed and adjusted the image for the paper I'm using, I'll set the Lightroom print sharpening options. There are only two controls that I can use. First I can set the level of print sharpening to apply by selecting one of three options, low, standard or high. For images with a lot of fine detail I tend to use high. If I were printing a portrait I'd probably use low and for everything else I just use standard. The other setting I can choose is the media type which can be either matte or glossy. This refers to the type of paper you'll be printing on. Now the thing that tends to confuse a lot of people is that you can't see the effect of the sharpening once you've chosen it. It's very different from the sharpening controls in the develop module where you see the effect on the image. The reason for this is the Adobe engineers have worked out how much sharpening to apply to create a sharp print. You don't need to see this because if you did you'd probably think it was over sharpened and reduced the strength. They don't want you fiddling around with what they know is already the right settings. It's enough that you set the media type and level of sharpening and they'd trust the software to do the rest. Now there may be times when you want more control than adjusting just these two settings. When this happens to me, I switch my sharpening over to Nick Sharpner Pro before printing. Then after using Nick Sharpner Pro on the image, I print it from Lightroom, making sure I switch off the Lightroom print sharpening. If I didn't do this, I'd end up applying print sharpening in Nick and in Lightroom, which is too much. So let's switch to Photoshop now and I'll explain how I use Nick Sharpner Pro for print sharpening. With my finished image open, I'll launch Sharpner Pro from the Nick Selective tool. As you can see, there are two versions of Nick Sharpner Pro. If you want to know how to use both of these tools for general sharpening, I'll include links to those videos and articles in the YouTube video information as well. To sharpen photos for printing, we want to be using the Output Sharpener version. When I click to launch the plugin, the Selective tool creates a new layer because that's how I've configured it. This means my sharpening is applied to a separate layer which I can then save with the Photoshop file. If you're familiar with sharpening, you may be aware of the popular three-stage sharpening model. There's capture sharpening to compensate for the softening effect of raw capture. There's creative sharpening where you might sharpen certain areas to draw attention to them. And finally, there's the output sharpening which is focused on preparing our photo for printing. Nick Sharpner Pro Output Sharpener combines the creative and the output sharpening stages in one application. Once the output sharpener opens, you can see the creative sharpening controls in one section. Then at the top we have the output sharpener controls which default to display. We need to start by changing the drop down at the top to inkjet print. You'll also find other types of printer here and each has a different set of controls. Switching to the inkjet printer method shows three controls we can now adjust. Let's zoom the image to 100% magnification and I also want to make sure I've got the preview set to sharpened image so I can show you some of the effects and the different options. Looking at the image with these settings, I'm sure you'll agree it looks terrible. But remember what I said about the sharpening in Lightroom. The sharpening is hidden from you because Adobe engineers don't want you fiddling with it. Trust the software to set the correct level of sharpening for the settings you're using. And the same goes for Nick. The first of these that I want to look at in Nick Sharpener Pro is the paper. Here we have six quite different surfaces to choose from. Different surfaces respond differently to ink when you print a photo to them, so they need to be sharpened differently. This is one of the great things about using Sharpener Pro to sharpen photos for print. It adjusts the level of sharpening to suit the media you select, and it has a good range of media. 
Watch what happens to the image when I switch between plain paper and glossy paper. Sharpener Pro applies much more sharpening when I select the plain paper option. That's because when we print to plain paper, the ink spreads or bleeds more than if we print to glossy paper. Because of this, it needs more sharpening to make the print appear sharp. The next option to set is the print resolution, and this also affects the sharpness of the image. Lower resolution printing tends not to look as sharp as high resolution, and so requires more sharpening. Watch what happens to the image when I change the resolution from 1200 by 600 to 2880 by 1440. Notice how the image receives less sharpening at the higher resolution settings. The final option that affects the level of sharpening is the viewing distance. The closer you are to an image, the less sharpening required to make the image appear sharp. In Nick Sharpener Pro, you can set the viewing distance in this drop down. Let's look at the two extremes of the settings, starting with the 60cm. Now compare this to the 3m plus setting. If the viewing distance will be 3 meters or more, the image needs a lot more sharpening to highlight the detail even on glossy paper. Now of course you may not know the viewing distance for the print. In fact, that's quite likely in most cases, which is when you should select the Auto option. Nick Sharpener Pro then calculates the likely viewing distance based on the image size. With a larger image print, the viewing distance is likely to be further than for a small print, because of this, the larger print requires more sharpening than the small print. The beauty of Nick Sharpener Pro is that you select the relevant details for your print. The software then takes care of applying the correct level of sharpening. You don't need to worry about getting it right. And as you've seen in this video, the correct level of sharpening for a print may make the image look terrible on screen. Learn to trust the software as it seems to make a great job of sharpening prints most of the time. After selecting the options for your print, it's a good idea to save them as a preset. This avoids the need to keep changing the sharpening configuration which takes time. You can do this by clicking the Add New Preset option. Use a name that you will recognise in the future and that includes some of your key settings. I'll call this preset Epsom 3880 Lustre Auto. Then when I want to use those settings, I only need to click Preset. After applying the sharpening to the image, I return to Photoshop. Now all I need to do is save the image and then print it from Lightroom. I hope you found today's video helpful. If you have, please share it with others and don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter. I'm Robin Waldy, you've been watching Lenscraft. I'll see you soon for another video. Thank you.